Hi, I'm Theodore Henry and today on the pages of Jamaica Magazine, we're looking at some developmental actions taking place in the country. We'll also be looking at how we're developing our creative arts to cultivate positive behavior among some Jamaicans. So stay with us as I take you through the pages of Jamaica Magazine. <music> Good day ladies, we are going to the communities to identify persons on the voters list over 40 years old who have died, so the EOJ can update their voters list. Oh, Derek can come off of the list now in the last year I'm dead. Exactly. From November 2018, the EOJ will be conducting a special exercise to remove the names of voters that have passed away from the voters list. You can help. Call the EOJ at 888-991-VOTE. For more information, visit our website at ecj.com.jm. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, December 12. Starting April 1, 2019, working Jamaicans will begin contributing more to the National Insurance Scheme, NIS. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the contributions will move from 5% to 5.5% of an employee's salary. The increase, he says, will be shared equally between employer and employees at a quarter of a percent. Dr. Clark says the contribution rate will increase further from 5.5% to 6% by April 1, 2020. This is an inevitable move to ensure that the fund remains sustainable and viable. The finance minister was speaking during Tuesday's sitting of the House of Representatives. Dr. Clark said the increases became necessary due to a 2016 actuarial study which revealed that if it was not done, the National Insurance Fund, which services the NIS, would be depleted by 2037. The finance minister also announced other cabinet-approved measures to ensure that Jamaicans continue to benefit from the NIS, among them an increase in the NIS insurable wage ceiling for the calculation of pension contributions. The figure, which has not been increased since 2013, will move from 1.5 million to 3 million in January 2021 and from 3 to 5 million in 2022. It is unavoidable and it is likely that we're going to have to make further changes in the future to sustain the NIS indefinitely. Cabinet has also approved the establishment of an Investment Management Review Commission. To be headed by Sajikor's Rohan Miller, the commission will include various members from the private financial sector, civil society, unions, Caribbean community of retired persons, and other stakeholder groups. The group will advise the government on the best investment governance arrangement practices and make appropriate recommendations for the National Insurance Fund, NIF. It will commence in January of 2019 and report on its uh, recommendations by the end of June 2019 and the terms of reference will be supplied at a later date. The Board of Petrodram will be seeking legal advice to recover funds that were possibly misused at the oil company. This is among other directives issued to the Board by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Monday in response to the Auditor General's report into Petrodram's operations. The Prime Minister said the instruction was part of the principle of restitution that will ensure accountability within public office. Jamaica can only benefit, our system of governance can only grow stronger if we establish that there has to be a principle of restitution. If public agents cause funds to be used inappropriately, illegally, then those who benefited and those who caused the government to lose must make restitution. In the meantime, Prime Minister Holness says the national energy solution, NISOL, is to be subsumed in government. Mr. Holness says the move, which is part of the state's public sector reform program, will cut huge overhead expenses and limit the possibility of public administrative failure at the entity. We have to look at the strategic value of NISOL. I mean, does the conditions exist now that existed 30 years ago that would require a a standalone agency, or could the function be delivered um, in a different modality? And so that consideration is ongoing.
The Prime Minister says Nissal will still carry out its core function of management, evaluation and implementation of all renewable projects. The agency was rebranded in 2015 from the conventional electrical distribution company Rural Electrification Program REP. There are other agencies which I'm presently reviewing and then after I'm finished with that um, I will make similar announcements. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Let's get a little breeze on this land. All right. Now let's get some bounce in the rhythm. All right. <laughs> let's get some fire on our hearts. Now that is what we call all right. Run, come, get some Jamaica. It's significant developments for the Jamaica Fire Brigade because our government partnered with its counterpart in Japan to improve the efficiency of the island's fire services. Watch this. We are the first in the region to be in possession of a vehicle of this magnitude. For several years now, this has become a regular affair. The local government minister and the Japanese ambassador rubbing shoulders, testing new equipment and vehicles commissioned to the fire brigade. The cheerful and gleeful affair, a manifestation of several meetings and collaboration with one end goal. The Jamaica Fire Brigade, as the first responder, must be in a position to respond when the needs arise. I'd like to reiterate that the government of Japan is very pleased that this latest endeavor will have far-reaching social and economic benefits for the people and the government of Jamaica. The relationship is decades old, since the Japanese government established bilateral relations with the island back in the 1960s. The Jamaica Fire Brigade is one entity that has benefited from the bilateral partnership. Since 2016, more than $10 million worth of command vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, equipment and other safety resources have been acquired for the local brigade. And this kind of vehicle will place the Jamaica Fire Brigade in a much better position to be able to coordinate with the Jamaica Defence Force, the police, the Ministry of Health and other agencies. The donations have benefited fire stations in and outside of the corporate area. The servicemen and women of St. Elizabeth, Manchester and Westmoreland have in recent years gotten well-needed resources. It is for several reasons the support from the Japanese government is appreciated. The fire brigade does more than extinguish fires. They assist the sick in cases of motor vehicle collisions, times of natural disasters and public education on safety and security. Without assistance from the Japanese, the government would have to fund these expensive upgrades to the brigade with tax dollars. The collaboration with the Asian country has also provided for the restoration of fire hydrants. More than 900 were repaired, with over $13 million in grant funding from the government of Japan. It's the first step towards repairing more than 4,000 hydrants across Jamaica that have been marked for repair and servicing. Local firefighters have also traveled to Japan for fire prevention training. The now Caribbean Maritime University has also been gifted with three refurbished fire trucks and an ambulance to support its training programs. It has allowed the university to improve emergency response to the people of the vulnerable communities of Port Royal and Harborview in East Kingston. Our general expectation regarding the use of the three fire trucks and ambulance uh, that over time there should be a decrease in the numbers of disaster-related losses, the saving of precious lives and mitigating the loss of properties of Jamaican people and business establishments. We have to teach our people how to work together. And this is what these emergency vehicles will do. 
the relationship between the Japanese government and the people of Jamaica goes beyond words. It is a gesture of good faith. The Japanese and Jamaican governments partnering for an effective and responsive firefighting service. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaican means building Jamaica. Here's how one group, Fiwi Jamaica, is using the creative arts to cultivate positive behaviors in Jamaicans while developing entrepreneurial skills. Mr. Music Man, tell me a story now. What kind of story do I hear? The kind of story that speaks about how realities are being redefined. The kind of story that uses the creative magic of music as the tool to cultivate positive behavior and attitudes while simultaneously developing entrepreneurial skills. A story that calls to all Jamaicans using the familiarity of sound, rhythm, and movement. The story written by Fiwi Jamaica. The Fiwi Jamaica project began in 2015 with the aim of empowering women and girls and other vulnerable groups dealing with human trafficking, domestic and intimate partner violence, among other issues, through various social and economic intervention programs. The project had seven activities to deepen our understanding of tolerance. A very significant part of our project was um, activity three, creating the space for change and transformation through music and culture. The interventions implemented under Activity 3 included St. James Gender-Based Violence Music Initiative, including Drums for Life, Masters in Residence Global Competitiveness Training Program, Girls Using Ubuntu Respect and Love for Entrepreneurial Success Girls, Songwriting Competition, Downtown Music Theatre Summer Camp, and Women Healing in Music. The drum has been the heartbeat of traditional African societies. It was used as the instrument to celebrate various aspects of life. Through Fiwi Jamaica, the drum became a medium of transformation for the youths engaged in the St. James Gender-Based Violence Music Initiative. The project involves the teaching of hand drumming by the Trelawney Maroons to students in selected communities in and around Manchester Bay. We also included teaching of traditional and popular dance and also spoken word as aspects of the Drums for Life program to make it a little bit more inclusive. Throughout the 12 weeks, we ensured that the students understood that the, they were able to consider a career from playing drums. Progress, Mr. Minana, time to look back. My education is key. From poverty, it's a go set me free. Time for we as no minna of that. It has helped me being more focused in my schoolwork and being particular with my friends. Master drummers also engaged the participants through mentorship. It kind of saved me out of trouble. And all my, my teenage, tender age yeah, was all about focusing on music. I was so occupied. I didn't have time to get involved in anything else. My world, you know, every day I get up, you know, what else new was song we'll learn today. So it was a, a drive that keep me occupied. And, and so I never get involved in anything else other than music and dreaming big, you know. The practice of mentorship also filtered into the Masters in Residence MIR Global Competitiveness Training Program. The intervention also adopted the coaching and entrepreneurship strategies of Jamaica's successful track and field enterprise. The MIR program became a creative hub for songwriters, performers, technicians and managers. We wanted to, to, to present an option, uh, a blueprint that was set to young 
young producers and young arts and things. You don't necessarily have to go that way. We have massage a template into, in, into place that we can say to people, here is, here is a way to train performers, here is a way to train songwriters, here are some things that we can introduce people to who are interested in management. That template produced a class with over 40 graduates, equipped with the skills to share the Jamaican creative experience on the international stage. It is much more than talent. That is only half of it, and that is exactly what the program brought to light. And it helped me to better myself as a performer, as a songwriter. I got exposed to the knowledge of engineering and marketing as well, so I can market myself as an artist. The female entrepreneurs in the MIR program, through the creation of Girls in Music, responded to the challenge as to how to enable women in the music industry. The overarching objective of Girls is to assist and empower female entrepreneurs in various industries and disciplines to achieve their goals by providing funding, mentorship, educational and entrepreneurial services, as well as other related activities. We have witnessed the ideas of various members come to fruition. These include two successful plays, Living Dangerously and Forbidden Fruit. The theme song for the Tambourine Army's march against abuse of both women and men with the deeply impactful and sobering anthem, Now Make Them Win. You are a part of the unveiling of an all-female-led album, Big Woman Things. Songwriters and lyricists were also provided with a creative space to speak of universal concerns through the songwriting competition. A total of 183 entries were submitted at the close of the 2017 staging. Contestants were required to compose lyrics to a partially completed song entitled, You Deserve to Be Loved. Their advice was to talk about it from the pastor perspective rather than, you know, say, you see him beat her, you, see, you know, say, I just say, as a pastor, I would encourage you, I should encourage you to stay, because the first rule of a pastor is never to tell a, a husband and a wife to separate. My mother told me that early, no matter what. But I just decided to say right away that now I'm no sin. I should encourage you to stay, but dear sister, sister, I can't encourage you to do that today. Safety has to be a first priority. Don't tell me, say, him love me because him, him beat me because him love me. Because love don't beat or easily get angry. You know, love is patient, love is kind, as the Bible will remind. Love supposed to bless you, not disrespect you. The philosophical underpinning of the entire project was our embrace of the South African concept of Ubuntu. I am because you are, you are because I am. And that became an important theme in the project that we not only shaped in song and music, but we delivered in much of the interventions that we've had. We wanted to empower Jamaicans to recognize that we have a responsibility for Jamaica. Jamaica belongs to all of it. It's Fui Jamaica, and that means we have a responsibility to ensure that Jamaica can grow and prosper and we can achieve the visions that we've created for ourselves in Vision 2030. Did you know 
that in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers. The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate with support from UNICEF. An important part of the development of any nation is its ability to provide clean and safe drinking water for its people. Today we share with you a water treatment process to help in making the liquid safe to drink. The human body cannot function without water. While you may live for up to three weeks without food, you cannot go more than a week without water. From breaking down the food we eat so the body can use it, to helping us heal when we get sick, Water is needed for almost every process that takes place in the body. And although 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, drinking it directly from seas, rivers, wells or aqueducts may make you sick. Untreated water contains bacteria and other germs, as well as chemicals that may be dangerous to the body. So in order to get the water from here to here safely, it has to be treated. Water treatment processes differ depending on the source. If the water is coming from a river, for example, here at the Negro River in St. Thomas, it usually goes through an extensive treatment process before reaching the pipe. Here is where we do the, the, the first type of treatment in the form of sedimentation and screening. Behind me, you can see where we screen the bigger stuff, like the stick, the stones and debris then we come down to the sediment where we separate the sand from the stones. And then this water will leave into, from St. Thomas and pipe into Kingston via pipeline into the Mona Reservoir. The Mona Reservoir is the island's largest raw water storage facility and provides the liquid to over 30% of people living in Kingston and St. Andrew. If this is where you get your water, here is where the next step in the treatment process occurs. Here in the reservoir, we allow for maximum levels of mixing, um, maximum levels of aeration, as can be done here at the facility. We also, at the reservoir, uh, you allow for settling out of the silt and the suspended particles, dirt particles, that would otherwise be in the uh, raw water. We then take the water from the reservoir and take it to the Mona treatment plant. At the treatment plant, chemicals are added to further purify the water. Chlorine is first added to kill bacteria. You have stages that include uh, uh, flocculation where we actually add chemicals to the water that allow those microscopic dirt particles that are still in the water to be brought together in what we call flux and then we are able to skim it off and remove it from the water. The water is then passed through filters which contain layers of sand, gravel, charcoal or synthetic materials that remove remaining small particles. The final stage is disinfection. Here, chlorine is added to kill any other bacteria or germ. Ensuring that we have what we refer to as chlorine residual that goes with the water so that as the water travels along the pipeline to our customers, should it come in contact with any germs along the way, there is enough chlorine residual in that water to destroy those germs and still be delivered to the customer in good quality. The water is tested all throughout the treatment process to ensure that what you get in your pipe meets World Health Organization standards. For several years running, the National Water Commission has won the best tasting water in the Caribbean. We have also been acknowledged by the 
various arms of the United Nations at different points in time as having one of the best quality water in the hemisphere. That is definitely something we can drink to. Regardless of the view that water is a free commodity given to us by nature, the work that is involved in treating water and bringing it to our pipes is no low-cost or inexpensive operation. So we want to implore you to conserve this necessary and precious resource. Here are some water conservation tips. Number one, be economical with how you use water. Always be mindful of the amount and whenever you can, use less. Number two, as soon as you realize that a pipe is leaking, get it fixed. Even one drop from a leak is too much to waste. Number three, in many cases, water can be reused. For example, what you use to wash the dishes can also water the plants. And number four, turn off the tap after you wet your toothbrush and leave it off until it's time to rinse your mouth. And when it's possible, cut your showering time. As we work to conserve water in our homes, remember, we're also helping to make our country the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Special Olympics team for Westmoreland. I'm also a Special Olympian. I'm proud to be one. I have a lot of medals, but the bad thing about it is not a lot of gold, but it's medals. As the first race I won, I came dead, dead last. A guy run left me, and this year I went back to Kingston, and I make up my mind. I say, you know what? We now make the Kenyan person run left me again. Because guess what? We want to one out of one. I don't want to be two nil. So I take it and if you all weep, I cheat until that the race will come. I'm going to win it by far. And accomplish well achieved. The experience was nice. I learned some new things. I learned, sir. And every time I can take shortcuts in our work. Thank you for the National Youth Service. I think God put it on this earth, really, for people with disability. It is a great program, a wonderful program. It helped me to realize a lot of things in this world. So I can do, think about other things and go at them. Not just sit at home and playing games, watching TV, because I know that won't help me. We, we have been privileged to go through this experience with all of these young persons. It has been both a learning experience for us, the staff at the NYS, as well as the young persons. We saw the young persons developing their own personal and professional skills. If you or someone you know has an intellectual disability, you can refer them to the National Youth Service, where our program fully caters to their personal and professional needs, where we will be sure to assist them in transitioning into the world of work. The National Youth Service, empowering Jamaica's young people. And this is where we'll have to leave you for today's show. But do join us again tomorrow for what promises to be another informative edition. If you missed anything, watch it all again on our website or our YouTube page. And don't forget to keep up with us via our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.